why, why? All right, let's uh, take a couple minutes and go over last Friday's quiz. Um, let's see, what circulates water through small compartments? That would be sponges. Uh, the um, flatworms basically eat through their mouth as do the hydra with tentacles that sweep things in. Round worms and segmented worms are two different groups of animals. That is correct. It turns out that the uh, segmented worms may be round, but the round worms are not segmented. Just a minute, there's people joining like crazy. Okay, earthworms are in the segmented group. That's what all those little grooves along them were, were body segments. I showed you that picture. Okay, plants pump minerals into their root cells by active transport. The water comes in by passive transport. And the sugar comes from the leaves. Plants need phosphorus to make nucleic acids. Hmm, I think I may recognize that question. Let's see here, just a second, checking out attendance. All right, everything looks good. No, no wackos other than our own wackos in the group. Let's see, horsetails. Are plants with vascular tissue and seeds? That is false. I think I recognize that question too. Amoeba-like live in human blood cells. Well, amoeba themselves don't live in human blood cells. And paramecium aren't amoeba-like, so it would be plasmodium. Uh, which of the following is found in large bacteria, a large intestine of nearly all endothermic animals? That would be E. coli. Uh, I 
think I had this worded wrong. I had ectothermic and about the first six people who took it. Um, well, it said ectothermic and that messed them up. So I went through and fixed those people. I fixed the question and I fixed the points for everybody else that had already taken it. Uh, by the way, <clears throat> that's uh, salmonella. Remember, we can abbreviate. And that's, I forget what that S is, but these were written out full in the notes. But remember, we can abbreviate like that. Members of kingdom Animalia are all heterotrophic without cell walls. That is true. And that's the last question. So there you go. That's uh, last Friday's quiz. There's a quiz out there right now. I try not to ask the same thing twice, but sometimes it happens. Uh, I don't remember everything about I've got asked before, it turns out. Um, I get that done by three o'clock. So I told you that this is a great day not to actually be eating lunch. And um, if you have a, a, while we take class, and if you have a delicate stomach, you may not be super happy with this. Um, but if you like gross and weird things, then you'll think this is the greatest thing ever. So uh, we talked about one kind of parasitic worm. We talked about the flukes, <clears throat> which are a kind of flatworm. Today we're gonna to talk about a couple more kinds of worms, starting with tapeworm, which is a second kind of flatworm. Tapeworms are reasonably common in the digestive tract. Now, I don't know that I recommend this or not, but if you were to do an internet search on face uh, flatworms, you would find all kinds of weird things. And I'm not really sure I believe everything that's out there. But the most common of the flatworms are in the digestive tract. And uh, the most common of the uh, flatworms are fairly innocuous, which means not seriously dangerous, unless you have a very, very heavy infestation. But the good news is because of our sanitary practices in um, our culture, they're not as big a deal as they used to be in the old days before running water and easy access to soap. Uh, and, but if you go to third world countries, there still is some issues. Some of you may have been to uh, on missions trips to countries where these were a potential, potential issue. So, tapeworms. Tapeworms, uh, the adults live in the small intestine, absorbing the host nutrients and reproducing. It turns out that basically, uh, tapeworms just lay in the small intestine. They don't need a digestive tract because they're in your digestive tract where the food is being broken down, they can just absorb it. They don't need a muscle system uh, because they don't move. They just sit there as the food is pushed by. Uh, they don't need much of a nervous system because you know there's not really that much to sense. And if they did sense it, they can't do anything about it. So basically it turns out the tapeworms are one enormous reproductive machine and a head-like structure to hang on for dear life. So at the one end of the tapeworm, at the front, if you will, we've got the Skolex, not to be confused with an expensive watch. And then after that, there's this just this one long strip of flat tape-like structure, hence, hence the name tape uh, worms. And each one of these little compartments is basically a reprodu reproductive machine. Each one of these uh, is a case of eggs and new ones keep growing up here by the head. And as they grow, the others get pushed back. And when they're ripe and mature and the eggs are already fully developed, then chunks of it will break off. And once they break off, they continue through the digestive tract with the rest of the digestive food 
ultimately ending up in the feces. So eggs then are released in the feces by contaminated people. We're talking here about the human tapeworm. This is the human tapeworm. There are lots of other species that live in other animals. Now, what I'm about to say, and you may have read ahead, I assume probably some of you have, but what I'm about to tell you may not make sense uh, to the modern mind, especially the non-farm mind. So pigs then eat contaminated food. Now, if you're putting two and two together, you got to ask yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute. Pigs eat human feces? And the answer is not on purpose and not in a modern farm. Uh, but for example, hang on a minute, I got to get myself a clean slide to draw on here. So uh, I know this farm. We lived not too far from it when I was growing up. And up by the road on top of this hill was the farmhouse. Uh, this how whoops. This, this farm had been around since um, mid-1800s maybe. I don't remember. I think it actually had a date on the barn, but I don't remember it now. Maybe early 1800s. Uh, and when I, it's gone now, but when I was a little kid, when I was in uh, junior high, they still had their outhouse outside the back door. And in case you don't know, the old outhouse was basically a uh, seat with a hole over a pit in the ground. And when you uh, used the outhouse, all of the stuff would end up in this pit. Now, then there was a slope, and then at the bottom of the hill was the barn, and uh, out here around the barn was the pig pen. No good at drawing pigs, so I'll just write oink. No good at drawing much, as you can tell from that diagram there. Uh, but when it would rain heavy, it doesn't look like rain, as I said, not uh, all that good at drawing. The water would run off the house and it would build up on the ground and it would flow into this pit and it would uh, start to float the stuff in the pit out and it would float out the fecal material. I'm not talking about chunks necessarily, I'm just talking about particles. And these particles would run downhill and could potentially, in a heavy rain, end up in the pig pen. Now, <clears throat> were intentionally feeding human feces to pigs? No. But it happened particularly in a day before septic systems and sanitary sewers. So eggs are released in the human feces, human. Pigs eat the contaminated food by accident, but nonetheless, in the pigs, the eggs hatch and form dormant capsules in the muscle. Um, and then they just sit there in the muscle dormant waiting. So what would happen would be sooner or later the pig is um, pig is butchered. If that meat was not cooked adequately, uh, cooked well enough to kill those little capsules, if I remember right, those capsules are called bladder worms, uh, but I'm not, right at the moment I don't feel super confident I'm right on that. I may not remember that, be, be remembering that right at the moment. But in undercooked meat, those capsules hatch, they burst open, the uh, larvae inside starts to grow. It's little sco solex, scolex, some of them have little hook-like structures, some of them have little sucker-like structures, some of them have both. But the scolex latches onto the side of the intestinal wall, and it uh, grows into a mature new tapeworm, starts reproducing, starts breaking off the proglottids, and they are released in the feces. So, wash your hands. Even without COVID-19, wash your hands. 
Next one on our list is parasitic notice. We've changed from flat to round worms, parasitic round worms. By the way, I spent some time looking for some pictures, but the pictures were all pretty nasty and I already showed you nasty pictures last time and I couldn't find pictures that showed the more detail like the Skolex that I wanted um, without feeling like there was a good chance they were copyrighted. So I figure this is already gross enough. Okay, parasitic round worms, Ascaris. These are the Ascarids. Uh, if you've ever had a dog that had worms and you wormed it, uh, chances are that the worms were the Ascarids. Uh, if you wormed it and you saw when it pooped that the poop was full of something that looked like spaghetti, uh, then they were definitely the Ascarids. Uh, people can get these too. They're fairly common in people in areas, uh, third world areas and so on. They used to be fairly common in the United States. Just a minute, what am I doing here? They used to be fairly common in the United States. Uh, back before, again, easy access to soap and running water. Uh, and when we uh, were using outhouses and so on. These live in the small intestine and the digestive tract also, but they do not latch on and hold on for dear life. These actually uh, have a kind of a, a thrashing motion, a um, kind of like the motion a fish makes if you catch a fish and then flop it on the bottom of the boat and it just sits there flopping back and forth. They can swim with a thrashing motion like that and they kind of keep swimming upstream as your digestive tract pushes the food downstream. They um, eat as they go. Male and female are separate. They mate and reproduce in the digestive tract. Uh, and as I believe I told you last week, they actually have been known to swim uh, farther and farther north, if you will when people don't eat enough to keep the worms happy, uh, and they actually have been known to swim up to the back of the mouth. Yuck. All right, now, so their life cycle. Again, eggs are released in the feces. Okay, right now I'm talking human roundworms. Again, human roundworms. Eggs are released in the, in the feces. A person who has roundworms, poops. There are eggs in it. Then, okay, again, if you're thinking, you're gonna be saying, what? The eggs are ingested. Wait a minute. No one eats poop. No one eats their own poop. Well, we sure hope not. But suppose a person, uh, shall we say what, rides the porcelain pony, and uh, you know what they say, the job isn't finished till the paperwork's done, and uh, so they take care of that, and they get all done, and they're in this big hurry or whatever, so they uh, just run out without washing their hands. <clears throat> now, you say, who does that? And if you're a girl, maybe you're right, but I've spent enough time in the men's restroom and heard the toilet paper dispenser and heard the flush and walked, watched the guy run out of the restroom without stopping by a sink to notice that this actually happens. Oh, I'm having trouble with this. Try and keep it out of the way. Come on. Just want you out of the way, just out of the way. Uh, so let me see, where was I? Watch the guy come out of the stall, run out without washing his hands. So, you know, you look at your hands, I don't see anything on them, I think they're good. Eh, they don't have anything you can see. But uh, there's a good chance they've got little tiny fecal particles. So, you know, you run out, go back to class, grab a pencil, rub those microscopic fecal particles on the pencil, 
Uh, maybe you pass the pencil to somebody else. They borrow your pencil. They wipe little microscopic fecal particles onto your, their finger. They go to the uh, lunchroom, let's say, grab their sandwich, rub that little microscopic fecal particle onto the sandwich, you know, enjoy the sandwich and whammo, infected. So the eggs are released in the feces and they are ingested, but not on purpose. In the digestive system, they hatch. Now this is weird, strange, and disturbing all at the same time. In the digestive system, the ascarid eggs hatch. They penetrate, they penetrate capillaries. In other words, they crawl into the capillaries and the larva circulate in the blood. Now they're very, very small at this point. At a certain age in development, the larva, when they get to the lungs, crawl out of the capillaries at the lungs. So now these little tiny microscopic larvae are in your lungs, if you have them. Most of you don't have them. Then they crawl up the trachea to the back of your mouth, where they are swallowed back to the stomach, where they mature and mate and release eggs, and so whoosh, we come back up to here. So ascarids, pretty nasty. The good news is if a uh, slight infestation isn't likely to cause problems, uh, they can become so thick that they obstruct the intestinal, um, small intestine, the passage of food through the small intestine. And if you're malnourished, uh, and they are stealing whatever little nourishment you're getting, that can add insult to injury. Uh, but these are pretty nasty little things in many ways. Okay, roundworms again. Just a couple, well, I'll go away. Just a couple miscellaneous. Um, hookworms. Hookworms, uh, I haven't heard of people having them very much, at least not in our culture. Um, the people I've heard of having worms in our culture had ascarids or tapeworms or pinworms. But hookworms chomp into the intestinal wall, they literally take a bite. I mean, they're very small, so we're not talking about a huge bite, but they take a little nip out of the inside of your intestine. And then when you start to eat, they, uh, they eat that blood. Uh, they're they can cause problems. Uh, the next one, the other miscellaneous one I wanna look at, and these are actually, in my opinion, one of the most mysterious things in the living world. So pinworms uh, are pretty common. Um, when I say common, I don't mean um, the majority even of people have them, but they're fairly common in babies uh, because babies are gross. Babies don't really care. Um, you know, babies, some babies, they mess their pants and they're like, ah, oh, it's the end of the world. But other babies are like, yeah, whatever. Uh, you know, stick your hand in there, play with it, pay, paint it all over the walls in your face. Babies are just babies. So pinworms can be a pro issue in little babies. But here's the mysterious part about pinworms. Pinworms live in the large intestine uh, and then they crawl out. You can guess how you get out of the small and a large intestine. Uh, they crawl out at night to mate and then I guess they crawl back in and lay their eggs. So here is the mystery to me. They're living in the large intestine. I don't mean to be too crude, but the, um, the saying is where the sun don't shine. So they live in the large intestine where it's dark and they come out at night. How in the world do they know it's night? Now you say, well, you're sleeping, but babies, that's one of the things about babies. They don't have regular sleep schedules. They sleep during the day when you don't want them to. They're awake at night when you want to sleep and you want them to be asleep. 
So how do these worms know? But you know, so what they crawl out, they tickle, babies don't care. It itches, it tickles, they scratch, and then the babies reinfest themselves. Um, and so these can <clears throat> these can be somewhat of a problem with babies, but they're not really a uh, I mean, oh gross, worms. No one wants that. But they're not normally at least a serious health issue. All right, that's all we're going to talk about for the uh, just a sampling of the parasitic roundworms and flatworms. Uh, tomorrow we will start on the cartilaginous fish and talk about different kinds of fish. Unless you had some specific questions, that's all that I really wanted to talk about today. Uh, uh, there is a quiz. Make sure you get the quiz taken. And um, I don't see any questions, so have a good day. <laughs>